These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons How the fuck's that even happened The two grown men on a mission now So buckle up and just strap in I've, I've been, been running, running hot You got, got me ticking Gonna blow my tire If you stop me up if you stop me up, I'll never stop. These two grown men have never seen The Simpsons. It's America's Barley Basket. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of America's Barley Basket. I'm your host, Marlon Wells, alongside host Nathan Fulsabach. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Marlon. How are you? Ah, you know. Yeah? yeah that's been, we get a lot of yeahs yeah, lately. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're always just okay. Surviving. Anymore. And One of these a, days, I hope for your sake, you're like, oh, I'm just fucking killing there's it. There's been a few of them, but they're very scattered throughout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, a lot of middle of the road mm-hmm. shit out of you lately. Yeah, and like again, speaking of middle of the road, uh, not freshly bathed, but not also a dirty boy. I'm no, the right thanks. level. Yeah, I'm not uncomfortably clean. I'm not like putting it out there. Like I'm <laughs> like, oh boy, that's a fresh boy. <laughs> you didn't come over real powdered up, <laughs> yeah. ready to rock. But I'm not a soiled boy. Okay. I'm just a boy, Marlon. Just a boy <laughs> out yeah. there in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'm glad. <laughs> okay. How about you, Marlon? I'm fine. I like. I don't know, man. I'm I'm holding together. I fucking like pulled something in my neck at the gym a couple days ago, and it's not great. Like I'm getting fucking headaches, and I can't turn my head right. Mm. Like I'm this getting old shit is for the fucking birds, it and it keeps getting worse until the Grim Reaper mercifully comes for you, and you open the door, embrace him, and it's all over. Uh, Until needs- then, we're going to make this podcast. Yeah, that motherfucker yeah. needs to leave me alone or hurry up, yeah. like one or the <laughs> other, man. How's the bathing situation? Are you taking care of yourself? <laughs> yep, I'm uh, yeah, I'm bathed. Take a weekly bath? How you doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Every- it's pretty rare a day goes by that I'm not showered. Saturday night bath? <laughs> Get ready for church. <laughs> yep, church uh, The baths. olden days, that's how it was, you know, mm-hmm. get that weekly bath before church, you know. Yeah. That's why they dress so nice as the one day of the week they didn't smell like their own assholes. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, it's it's a pretty rare case if a day goes by and I don't shower. Imagine those farm wives lying in bed and the husband comes in, <laughs> oh. been working in outside for six days and hasn't bathed. <laughs> oh. Imagine what the that smell in a hot, no air conditioning just one bit. room fucking earth oh lodge. my god if if he wanted to fuck i'd bite his nose off in his sleep <laughs> as like a way of getting back at him like, you it's fuck. amazing anybody fucked yeah back man, then. how did they it must think like, some kind of weird religious obligation like you just well, felt they like had they, to you know because i mean the you, you gotta have 10 because badgers yeah, are gonna that's true. take six of them yeah <laughs> and just to break up the monotony if nothing else you know yeah. like just Feeling your bones ache as you lie in bed and slowly Eating boiled clay every yeah. day or whatever <laughs> the fuck they manage to yeah, put together. Can, and you know, there's a, if you're the woman, there's a what a one out of ten chance maybe you're gonna bust. So like that's <laughs> yeah, it's a bad odds, but that's some shitty life is oblique things where like maybe this is the one time he'll accidentally do good at this. We've talked about we both like uh, the witch that movie, the oh, witch. Yeah, yeah. But imagine the smells of Ooh. the witch. Mm. God, how much of a bummer it probably is when your kids hit puberty so they start to stink. Mm-hmm. That's a weird thing your body does. You just start to stink. <laughs> just one day, just, yeah. I reek now. Mm-hmm. I remember being, the, I uh, thankfully, I caught on pretty quick. Like, oh, I'm at an age I got to shower every day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, when you're eight, you're like remember. a shower every three days type of kid, you mm. know, like, unless you like, li- unless you like actually fall into mud, you know, <laughs> like, like an eight year old don't stink like an 18 year old right. stinks, you know, we like, were bath people growing up. We weren't shower yeah. people growing up. Oh yeah. I was sh- bath until I don't know. 11, 12, probably. Oh, we continue to do, like, we, we had a shower in the basement that no one ever used. Oh, really? Like, yep. the, the thing in the main bathroom yep. was a bathtub. Yeah, I, I had some buddies that had houses, like, you know, like, that has that slant ceiling, so there isn't room to stand up, you oh, know? Oh, sure, like, yeah. You just got to tip, you just, like, do, <laughs> like, do a, <laughs> you got to have one of your family members hip toss you into the tub, <laughs> get that right angle. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Big wrestling this weekend that uh, I believe you're going to miss out on because you're going to be out of town. Well, the, by the time this comes out, it's come and gone. Mm. But I assume it was pretty good. Oh. <laughs> 
Some power slams. Yeah, the big yeah. return of CM Punk is Ooh, uh, this weekend. Exciting. As this is being recorded, was last weekend as you're hearing it. I'm assuming it was great. I hope something <laughs> horrible didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lesson from radio. When you're recording your pre-recorded weather, don't get too specific. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Just like, oh, it's mid-60s today yeah. anyway. CM Punk was attacked by a bear this afternoon. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who'd have thought? Chicago, <laughs> big bear country. <laughs> we do have, uh, as per always, we have some Simpsons happening. Damn uh, right we do. On the show this week. I guess, I guess we can talk about the Simpsons. We're right in the middle of uh, season 15. You got we, it. This is going to be a real chunk, real middle chunk. Like This is like upper pelvis to like upper ab- abdomen. <laughs> if you're to divide this. <laughs> <laughs> if like the season 15 was the board game operation we're right in the mm, middle right right now. at the crotch yeah we're at the bread we're, basket we're right in the crotch of the yeah. season <laughs> and episode nine is i annoyed grunt bot so i do bot uh millhouse and bart uh, there i did like the millhouse is all excited because he got something in the mail and he yeah. tra- traverses all these kind of like possible Pratt falls only to get brained by the door <laughs> as homer goes to work and steps over poor yeah. unconscious millhouse <laughs> he lays there for a while yeah there's vultures yeah <laughs> and finally bart goes outside and sees millhouse and millhouse is excited to show that he has like a kind of a hot rod pedal bike conversion kit yep turn your bike into a cool looking motorcycle bike which i remember thinking shit like that was cool when i was that age Uh so i do get it and uh they are the talk they're a hit this new bike with all Mm -hmm. the chopper stuff flames and shit on it there's a bit i find is bad writing i haven't had to do one of these breakdowns in a while so uh, they ride past ned who's pulling rod and todd in a a wagon Uh uh-huh and ned's like that's a bitchin bike bart and rod's broad like complains about him swearing and then ned's like lighten up roddy it's like yeah that's not him no and it's not a good enough joke to like go out of character that much like yeah it wasn't like you you finally wrote a joke where flanders curses and that's yeah. what you wasted yeah, it on exactly yeah. yeah yeah and they're the, so they're riding around town really really feeling themselves there's <laughs> a there's a good dunk on poor domino's pizza oh here. With the cops well, yeah. yeah the cops like oh it sounds like a motorcycle gang coming because bart's bike like makes noise yeah, now yeah. and he's like and so he throws a sign that says pizza over the cherries which it's still a cop car <laughs> <laughs> but then the uh whoever he's with i think it's lou is like but chief what if they like pizza and he goes i got that covered and puts a yeah. domino sticker on the <laughs> side i don't know know how hot a uh, take it is ain't nothing wrong with the domino's dude, pizza y'all were you eating a lot of domino's around this era no it, the, the domino's at this time it was like did they dislike us it's so bad <laughs> are they gonna deep six their own company because they hate us so much well do you remember probably like eight years ago domino's came out with that ad campaign where it was like the ceo apologizing i do remember that, that. that i remember this is, that they went through a, yeah. a re vitalization i had a lot of friends exactly this time frame that would take advantage of that three medium one topping pizzas for 15 dollar takeout and mm. literally just drop three pizzas on their floor and yeah. just eat pizza for four to five days and like <laughs> and i remember just like getting a fresh slice i was like how are you like why would you do this to yourself like have some self-respect this is depressing like it, really? it got that bad like huh. and i like try Obviously, I like trash pizza. Right. It's not yep. like I'm holding my nose when I'm eating anything but gourmet pizza. But it was, it's like, what is going on at <laughs> D- Domino Co. or whatever they call it? Like, <laughs> no, I don't I don't remember that. This was like, oh, three. I had just gotten out here to where uh, ordering pizza was a thing you could do. Yeah. So, and I think we were eating a lot of Papa John's because Papa John's had a good, like, uh, campus discount because mm-hmm. we all lived on campus. I remember when I moved to Nashville as a kid or like 19 and I'm thinking like, wait a second, all those things I see advertisements on TV for, I can <laughs> I get can them. I have them now. Yeah, yeah, I can get them. Yeah, like, so that's for like, in, in my hometown, our little mom and pop pizza place did deliver. Oh, but, really? But it was like, see you in an hour and a half mm-hmm. and it's like, but it's like, oh wow, like the things I see on TV are available here. Look at huh. that. Like, 
Yeah. I'm going to avoid the noid. Here it comes. <laughs> like, As it stands now, if I'm going to order pizza from a pizza chain and not a local joint, it's probably going to be Domino's because yeah. I really like Domino's specifically their buffalo chicken pizza mm. is super mm. good. God, I don't. I'm almost at a point now where I'd rather have a basic ass like tombstone from the oven. Yeah. Then a good frozen. Then a basic delivery chain pizza. Like, I'll fuck with a uh, just like a pepperoni sausage Papa John's. Just give me some of that garlic dipping mm-hmm. sauce. And you just did it to take the shots. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I also because it's just such an abomination. I appreciate it. Is the uh, stuffed crust from Pizza Hut. Yeah. The OG stuffed crust. I can I can mess with that, too. Pizza Hut, also the best thin crust pizza mm. in the national chain delivery game. Interesting. I like a thin crust, so okay. give me a cracker crust. Any, really fuck my mouth up with any some hot takes on, uh, shards. on uh, Little Caesars? I like a Little Caesars. I ain't above it. Like, I'll, I'll eat. We were, especially in college, we were big Little Caesars $5 people. drive through $5 drive through That's a lot of food for five bucks. Yeah. We lived in a house uh, not too far from from where we are now, actually. And it got to the point where, like, like I had a fucking stack of empty Little Caesars boxes <laughs> in my bedroom that I uh-huh. used as an end table. Oh, terrific. Like, I had stuff on the boxes. Yeah. Just oh, like, man. yeah, this is furniture now. No, it's not. We're just Think animals. Some woman you met <laughs> that m- had the misfortune of walking into that bedroom. Ain't none of us were meeting women, yeah. <laughs> buddy. <laughs> that, was man. A, that was a boys only that apartment. That was a boys club, for <laughs> yeah, sure. No girls allowed. Yeah, one of the guys in that place slept on a raft. <laughs> like a fucking inflatable kid's raft. That's tremendous. Amidst a pile of laundry. Oh, God. I had a friend that lived in a place where he just fell into a pile of dirty clothes like a, like a <laughs> yearling. <laughs> just like in a manger. <laughs> yeah, we were fucking dirt dogs in that house. That house looked exactly like the house from Fight Club. And oh, like yeah. uneven floors, yeah. shitty, just a horrible fucking place that we played paid way too much money for. Yeah. We just <laughs> played Tiger Woods on the Xbox and ate Little Caesars for a <laughs> year and a half. Cost four grand a month to heat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that place was fucking horrible. But we ate a lot of Little Caesars. Yeah. I haven't had it in a long time, but I, re- I remember Little Caesars fondly anyway. That's good. Yeah. I can I I have it brings me back to a simpler time in life. I I will admit I absolutely want to eat whatever that new uh, pizza abortion they have is <laughs> that fucking looks like a kid's boomerang toy the oh. crazy calzoni whatever yep, that thing's yep. called. I absolutely want to have and one of those. I want Little Caesars to succeed because I love their ad campaigns. They have some yeah. of the best ad yeah, campaigns. The, have for years yeah. now. Uh, so Barton uh, ne- or Millhouse or Again, just loving life. They're the talk of the neighborhood, right? And they're souped up bike. But then the bullies come by. Yeah. And the bullies tease them because even though it's a souped up bike, it's still a souped up kid's bike. And they're on like highway bikes. So yeah, the, like 10 cr- speed, yeah. like mountain bikes. Well, no, they're not mountain bikes. They're like the highway. Like that's what like the like Tour de France, Tour de France bikes. bikes. Like, yeah. That's what, like that was. Those were not the bikes cool bullies road bullies road mountain bikes right that's what you graduated to as a mountain bike i mean that bike does make more sense for riding in town the, oh, those are town sure. bikes you know the i super always thought nerd. those looked super fucking uncomfortable yeah. to ride when they're all bent over yeah. on like that lower level of handlebar yeah, they're it's meant, like, god that looks awful they're meant for going long distances on paved roads mm-hmm. like, look, yeah like and, and those were all the rage because I don't know if you ever like if you ever drive by like there's a bike for sale for two dollars at a rummage sale like <laughs> hey please take this yeah it's one of those bikes because yeah. I think there's a hot moment in the late 70s early 80s that's what a lot of moms were buying I think bike riding became in vogue as like an exercise thing huh it was I, bikes were something everyone had but n- hardly anyone ever rode back there's home always a one of those bikes in our little shop a little shed on our trailer house we live in the trailer park that have one of those a mom bike like that with a baby seat in the mm, back so yeah. ostensibly at one point in my early development I was strapped into the back <laughs> of that my mom did some laps around Southbrook and realized this is depressing yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like you'd occasionally go like riding with your friends or your your cousins or whatever, but like 
we were half an hour from the nearest yeah. piece of pavement. Riding See, bikes wasn't fun. You live in a town with enough pavement. It is. It's your life. That's yeah. Yeah. Like, cause that was a big deal for us. Like when you got to that age where you graduated to getting a bike with speeds. Mm-hmm. Like, oh boy. And then you could actually ride around town. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet it was a blast. We were out. Yeah. But the thing is like when you're out in the country, like by the time you're ready for a big boy bike, you're riding four wheeler or motorcycles. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it wasn't really like we kind of skipped the bicycle step yep. at some point. Like, but like bicycle, it was like the thing that I missed not living in a town is that's a big social thing that you're missing out on because that's what kids do. Get they just together get together, and ride, ride bike, and start yeah. shit on fire. And go. <laughs> we had the we had the bike trails, which was just basically mm-hmm. like a juvenile delinquent hangout, like. <laughs> It just, I was under a bridge, literally under a bridge. I'm, I, I hope it still exists to this day. I'm sure. I don't know. Kids with their internet, they probably don't use the bike trails. You listen to you, old man. Hardly ever start things on fire anymore. <laughs> just watch <laughs> videos of things burning uh, on TikTok. Back, back in my day, we had <laughs> matches. They, they watch other kids burn things on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> old man nathan mad that nobody commits arson anymore oh, are you going to be to watch your walk in on your kids just serenely watching a em, emotionless child burn things <laughs> here we go that's a good burn there make sure to like and subscribe for the yeah. next thing i burn just smoke filling the room he's lighting a hobo on fire <laughs> yeah. he's burning a man and feels nothing yeah it just keeps escalating like oh there we go <laughs> pile of napkins nothing bad can happen there <laughs> A sleeping homeless woman. <laughs> Where's this kid at right now? God damn, someone call the police. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Bart now wants a new bike, even though he just fixed up his old one. So he kind of cons his way into getting a new bike by having Dr. Hibbert run over his old bike, but just throwing a bike in front of him. Yeah, I like the I like the rationale between him and Homer of like, oh, so as long as I still have a bike, I can't get a new one. That's right. And if uh, that one breaks, I would get a new bike. No questions asked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, he just hucks it in front of Hibbert <laughs> as he's driving by. And as, as Hibbert leaves, he accidentally runs over Snowball too. <sighs> Oh, we got some hot. That was a scoff. Well, it's just like, like I wasn't ready for it. So like when it did happen, because he like barely gets out of frame yeah. and you hear thump. Yeah, like, yeah. God damn it. Also, no one closed the fucking door. Why is the cat out? Yeah. We've literally, I don't think we've seen the cat out of the house in 15 seasons. Yeah, good point. Why yeah. is the cat out today? Yeah. But the cat was out today. And the cats cat, do that. Cats are crafty. Cats. Uh, Snowball 2 is no longer upon this mortal coil. So they have a, fu- a little funeral. Lisa's real broken up about it. They decide to get a new cat. Meanwhile, uh, Bart has gotten his new bike, but it comes in a kit. Like yeah. a bike does. Yeah, in a so, box. So uh, Homer is, is tasked with putting it together. How does that go? How so? I was just chiming into the next thing oh that's that's i i fumbled that was, that was a beautiful handoff and i fumbled did, it yeah yep. no. <laughs> yeah i put right the past. my right arm up when it should have been down with the handoff so my bicep got in the way it you was know how in mess. nba jam if you throw for the oop but or <laughs> yeah. you go for the oop but the other guy doesn't <laughs> just, throw it <laughs> you just jump up with your hands in the air like an asshole yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly so right away it goes well because mm-hmm. he's showing off to the new kid to the bullies with this fancy new bike and then it just starts to virtually disintegrate <laughs> like not one bolt was done correctly so yeah nothing just, stayed together so whole, it's just bart lying on a pile of bike parts <laughs> so yeah it does not go well the bullies get a good laugh at his expense uh and then so uh there this this totally was the peak of battle bot media yes. in a, what a weird thing in public like at least two basic cable channels had BattleBot shows, if not more. And one of the networks even got into it. Yeah. It I was, remember watching a lot of BattleBots. I think it's one of those like things two-ish. that sounds better. It's better in theory than in practice. Yes. Because what I always remember is just the wedges would dominate. Yeah. It's like, oh, so it's just a doorstop would yeah. just ruin everybody. It's I like, remember the one that would air on like TNN that was like, like adjacent to pro wrestling and it would be like oh the fucking look at this robot with its thousand saw blades and a flamethrower and a big robot penis 
is going to lose to the one that just looks like a wedge of to the, cheese. Yep, to the because it'll just drive forward and tip it over. Yep, it's so dumb. Yeah, but like for a six week period, America was captivated <laughs> by, by bots. robots fighting. And, yeah, uh, Bart and Homer weren't immune to that. So uh, Bart thinks it'd be cool. And Homer's kind of trying to win back Bart's affection. It's like, well, you know, I could build you something like that. And he's like, yeah. You know, sure you can. No offense, Dad, but yeah, that's. I not just watched happen. you f- fuck up a bicycle. Yeah, they, it's like they print instructions for bikes, <laughs> yet you still somehow. <laughs> so Bart or Homer's convinced he's going to show him otherwise, and he spends a bunch of time in the garage trying to build a robot, and realizes he can't fucking build a robot. He's, yeah, imagine that. Yeah, a smart man can't do that, let alone Homer. Yeah. So Homer figures out, okay, uh, how I'm going to get around this is I'm actually going to be in the robot, like. Yeah. I will be controlling it, so. And it just looks like a mailbox with arms and a wooden mallet. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the design of the dumb robot. It's very funny looking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then the robot, just like, you know, they only got 23 minutes. So it goes from being like, uh, like the drafting stage to all of a sudden they're in contests. Yeah. So it's, you got to love episodic TV. They're so. on TV immediately. Yeah, so, yeah. And he's kicking ass right away. Mm-hmm. Like he is, he's basically a, a mailbox who flails a hammer. Yeah. That's pretty much what it is. And he's on a trike on the inside of it. I love how much fucking damage he takes throughout these yeah. fights too. Like the one's got a saw blade that oh. tears into his arm. The little Ralphie robot with the gun. With a gun. Yeah. 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 There's a great line from one of the announcers well if you ever wanted to see a mailbox shoot a child that's about as good as <laughs> close as it'll get yep <laughs> oh man and uh, during this whole time lisa's getting new cats and they're all meeting unfortunate <laughs> we get snowball three yep and then we get coltrane mm-hmm. so uh we have three cats die in this episode i love when they're in the animal shelter for the first time and marge is like Lisa's talking about, I'm not sure I'm ready for a new cat. And Marge has that book that's titled, When Bad Things Happen to Cute Children. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, well, it says here that, you know, getting yeah. a new pet will help. <laughs> and God damn it, when Snowball 3 drowns in that fish tank, yeah. <laughs> they just show the cat swatting at yeah. the fish. And yeah. then she comes in all happy to feed the cat. Yeah. And the cat's just floating she's, face down in a fish tank. She's singing that song in the kitchen while she's putting the, the, the cat food together. <laughs> oh, God, I laughed at that. Because and, the way that's drawn, the imagery of that cat just yeah. floating in the fish tank. It's like, Jesus. And then Coltrane jumps out the window. Yep, Coltrane Ooh. takes his own life. Yeah. Because he doesn't like the jazz she's playing yeah. for him. And now the cats do not like her at the shelter. They, she's like the Black Widow. Yep. So like they all try to make themselves very unpresentable. The cats all hiss at her or hide in the corners of their cages when they come to get another one. Which, to be fair, would probably be suspect if you showed up for the yeah. third time They're that coming week. coming here far too often. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing with these cats? So Homer is pretty in rough shape, but they're kicking ass. So it's worth it for him. You know, him, Bart loves it. And uh, it's all fun and games until uh, Professor Frank and his nephew yeah. join the fray with what is basically the bad guy ro- robot from RoboCop 1. 8209. There yeah. we go. So Homer is very, very scared about this. Uh, so it's what you expect if he he can't say no to bart so he's basically he's just committing suicide yeah well i guess i'm gonna die (laughs) in this robot he gets the shit kicked out of him (laughs) and is getting stomped and kicked and finally he gets stomped real bad to the point where he bursts out the side like an overboiled sausage yeah and that's when you figure out that that robot has a directive where it can't harm anyone yeah it can't hurt humans and therefore, I guess Homer wins. Yeah, and, and I think that's a that's a dig at how like slapdash the rules for robot yeah. wars. Like, wait, so he wins, but he's not a robot. And then yeah, it's like okay, whoever wins, whatever, none of this matters. It's not like we're keeping real score anyhow. Yeah, and the crowd hates it. The crowd yeah. like boos. And meanwhile, Lisa's just sitting on the porch, just you know, very upset about the fact that all of her cats keep dying and that's when crazy cat lady we get two I haven't seen this woman in a decade we get two appearances within five episodes of each other yep and gives lisa a new cat which they just can, hucks it at her yeah well it's basically a twin of snowball two yeah so like, looks just like her we're just gonna call you snowball two 
that interaction right here with Principal Skinner when she's like, you're Snowball 5, but I guess for simplicity and so we don't have to buy a new bowl, we'll just call you Snowball 2. Yeah. And Principal Skinner walks by and goes like, well, that's a little lazy, isn't it? And she yeah. goes, yeah, I guess it is, Principal Tanzarian. <laughs> yep. Harkening back to like 10 fucking seasons yeah. ago. I love it when they do that. When yeah. we had the fucking episode, the, the awful episode about Principal Skinner not being... being yeah. Principal Skinner. He took his identity in Vietnam. Martin Sheen, I think, was the voice of the real yeah, Skinner. I like that we made that joke because, goddamn, that's a thing I never thought we would deal with again. Yeah, no shit, yeah. Because it's not well thought of among Simpsons fans. Like, I remember that being like one of the first episodes that was kind of ubiquitously despised by Simpsons mm -hmm. fans yeah. is that Skinner one. So the fact that they brought it up is like, yeah. oh, wow, yeah. I'm surprised. And, uh, yeah, just because I think it's kind of no, it's a shark jumping point for a lot of Simpsons yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. So I like that they made that joke right there. I liked that episode. I, I like being reminded of how dumb fucking Robot Wars was. Yeah, very much so. What a dumb... Yeah. Every way around. Yeah. Real dumb. And I like the... Like, I'm a cat person, so I like that we got a cat-based episode. Yeah. yeah, this episode was fine. I was into it. Yeah. It started off this batch well. Yeah, off to a good start. Yeah. We need some of that forward momentum with a couple of these later ones. Ooh, you might be... La I enjoyed this batch, but we'll see. Maybe I Oh, yeah? There's yeah. one for sure I'm thinking of. Foreshadowing. Is it episode 10, Marlon? Uh, it's not episode 10, which is Diatribe of a Mad Housewife. I assume Diary of a Madman. Mm, or something, or, yeah uh homer uh eating fast food on the way to work needs more lap space so he throws that throws the seat back and has that fucking yeah. that huge fast food spread yeah. laid out on his gut torso yeah. as somebody who eats in his car a lot and always <laughs> has you gotta you gotta abide by some rules no yep. dipping sauces only you only order things that are easy to eat or with except one the fact hand. you gotta pull over for eight minutes right yeah yep. Uh, while not paying attention to the road, of course, he drives through Burns' office and is fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was while well, in the middle of like a health inspection. Yeah. 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 Um, we see uh, Marge and the kids are at a bookstore. And what's her name? Is it Esme Delacroix yeah. is the author yeah. that is appar who apparently writes those smutty Fabio cover romance novels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's there doing a like a meet and greet Q and A kind of thing. Uh, Marge decides she's going to write a book. Uh, <laughs> I love that her question was like, "If I write a book, will they tell me when it comes so out?" Good. God <laughs> damn! I laugh. What an insane question to ask. Yeah, and Esme has the same reaction, just yeah. like, uh, "Yeah, I suppose they would." Yeah. And then that's the that seals it. Like, yeah, I'll okay, be an author. then yep. I'll write a book. <laughs> will they tell me when mm. it comes out? Uh, Homer, in the meantime, just wants to have a job before he gets home, and Marge finds out he was fired, so he takes a job as a car salesman on the way home. Did that line of work ever appeal to you? Absolutely not. I <laughs> did not think it would. No, we, like, I... I, we've briefly discussed before I had one sales job selling light bulbs over the phone and <laughs> hated every minute of it. Oh boy. Yeah. I don't have the, I don't have the pushiness or the, yeah, the killer of, yeah. instinct yep. to be a salesman. Like, Hey, you want to buy a car? No. Okay. Bye. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> just waving big, exaggerated yeah. wave. <laughs> have a good one yeah and and i'm too i'd be too soft-hearted mm -hmm. <laughs> like because I, I would also be like oh i understand but boy i sure wish you did yeah. and kick <laughs> kick my foot in the dirt like, i think working at a car dealership had no appeal to me but owning my own little car lot did until a friend of a mutual friend of ours who works in it she's like yeah man to make a living doing that you have to be an evil unscrupulous person <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to sell cars you know are ticking time bombs like i've always driven by those little independent car lots and been like who even shops for a car here you know because like 
like every i think every vehicle i've ever bought and i bought at a dealership like a huge dealership so when you drive by these places that have six cars yeah. i'm like who even who buys cars it's a here certain, uh if you're looking for certain cars a, a big like it's funny that i never have bought one from them because they often get good low mile sedans because they buy cars at those at used car auctions in the southern states where there's lots of retirees okay so if you're looking for a low mileage buick without any rust those are a pl- <laughs> like those are a place you can get them at like, that sounds like a, a hitting online yeah. that sounds like a line you're spitting at a bar yeah. <laughs> hey uh if you're interested in a buick without any rust is that a euphemism no i literally I, know where to get a car a for car you. for sale <laughs> Uh, I have not only have I never bought a car at a big dealership, I've never bought a car. I don't believe at a little dealership. I have only bought in private Straight sales. From the buyer. Yep. Really? Yep. I don't even know how you'd go about buying a car at a dealership. I would just, I you just, just show up. <laughs> I just, I'm so cheap. I would feel like yeah. I, I know there's a better deal if I find and i risk my life and i find a stranger on the internet <laughs> every car i've bought has been in a hardy's parking lot like okay of course here we go <laughs> i shouldn't be surprised Here's, i'm not surprised let me see that driver's license i'm not as trusting as i once was i gotta get some proof that they own the car <laughs> oh do you you, yeah. you go that far now yeah but i mean handing over seven grand and hundreds here you go give me those keys and that title have a good one. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't think I've ever bought in a car that way. I don't know that I've bought in anything Back that home? way. Back home? You never, that's, the, no, like, yeah, like. My I, first car came from a lot. Really? Oh, yeah. No shit. Yeah, yeah. It's always, especially back home, it's like, oh, I know a guy. Ah, so-and-so's, their wife is getting a new car. They take care of their things. It'll be a good deal. That's yeah. a lot of the deals back home. No, like, it makes sense. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I just never. I've never lived that life. Yep. Um, yeah, I am. I do not just talk the dirt dog talk. I walk the. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I you know. have witnessed enough of my of my dirty white boy escapades. Yeah, I've ridden in your cars. Yeah. I should know that they didn't come from lots. You somehow, to your credit, like the amount of like dirt dog internet fucking wheeling dealing that you do you usually end up with pretty quality shit so you do have an eye for it i do i love i i pride myself in finding amazing cars at amazing prices <laughs> you really should have your own yeah. lot just a big neon sign of my face smiling <laughs> honest nathan <laughs> i buy cars on the internet and sell them to poor people Holy shit, getting all that on a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing it in that god awful yeah. neon window paint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be good. Oh. Uh, so, Homer's not a good car salesman, not good at anything on yeah, the car lot. Terrible at it all. Uh, and ends up not being able to say no to that 1960s ambulance that yeah. they're selling, yeah. which is. It looks like Ecto-1, so yep. it's cool. I love the line, an ambulance from the 60s. I bet a lot of hippies were denied care in this <laughs> thing. That's a good line. <laughs> I like that the guy the guy who owns the lot is like, yeah, we'll never move that thing. It's a hunk of junk. The only thing that works is the siren, and that's what it takes to sell Homer on this ambulance. <laughs> um so Homer gets home. He's got a paramedics outfit on already. This <laughs> this is his new career. He's yep. decided. Uh, Marge, in the meantime, telling is trying to tell him that she's going to write a book, and he goes something along. The, he says something dismissive, and she goes, "What do you mean? You quit two jobs in one day without a phone call?" <laughs> which I thought was funny. Yeah. To which he immediately replies, "I also fed some ducklings." Yeah. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> and she says, "I know. I got your message." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that was an extremely funny joke. Yeah, I like childlike Homer. Yeah. Uh, Marge is writing her book uh, at the computer. She's writing kind of a wailing tale. Yeah. Like a romance novel set in Nautic like themed. Moby Dick yep. days. Yep. Uh, Homer, in the meanwhile, in the meantime, is a fucking bore. Uh, so <laughs> Marge revises the story to make Homer shitty and make Ned the hero. Yeah. Because Ned 
Ned comes walking by the kitchen window and goes, Hi, like, Heidi Ho, neighbor, I thought you could use a stud finder. They were on sale two for one, so yeah. I got you one. Yeah. What a fucking weird yeah. neighbor that Ned is. Yeah. <laughs> if my neighbor from down the hall came over and was like, in case you need a stud finder, I got an extra here one. Here you go. Be like, Get the fuck out yeah. of here. <laughs> I don't, don't want to touch this. Don't come near me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh Lisa has, uh, uh, so Marge finishes the book. Lisa convinces her that uh, she should let Homer read it because uh, Homer is not portrayed well yeah. in the <laughs> uh, in the story. So Marge, of course, is like, okay, fine, I'll let Homer read it. And he doesn't, but says he did. Yeah. And he says, yeah, it's totally fine. So Marge <laughs> thinks that she's got the green light to go ahead and get it published. Uh, Homer hosing out the back of that uh, <laughs> ambulance. ambulance yeah. Singing made up words to Gary Newman's cars, yeah. which I fucking love that song. Uh, uh, that's a that's tough to tough to beat it. That's that a, song is a banger. Both yeah. versions, the Gary Newman original and the Fear Factory Ooh, cover. A Fear Factory reference. Yeah, we made a quite cars a while ago by one of them. Fear Factory. Yeah. Is a fucking <laughs> great song. I think there was a good scene, a, a, a cutaway when. Lisa's thinking how she's going to talk to Marge about the book. Mm -hmm. and it's like a cut into her in brain. In her brain, yeah. Like these different parts of Lisa. And there's that one that's chained up, the libido. Yep. And just goes, let's kiss, boys. <laughs> so she's chained up in this glass yeah. cage. <laughs> let's kiss, boys. It's such a great thing. Like, yeah. And then I think it's the one labeled conscience is like, you're not getting out till you're 16. Yeah, yeah that was funny. Yeah. Uh, so Marge, Marge writes the book and it gets published. We get fucking Dr. Monroe at the book signing. What is going on? And I thought he was dead. He makes it mentioned, oh, I've been very sick. Yeah. You think it's like an inside joke? We I have don't no get? idea. Because I'm pretty sure he was like, I'm pretty sure they mentioned once that he's dead. Yeah. Okay. S somewhere yeah. in the past. So, yeah, yeah, no idea. Dr. Monroe's back, I guess. We get a Thomas Pinchon appearance. which Voiced by Thomas yeah, Pinchon. How crazy is that? I had to look that up. I don't know who the fuck he is. Yeah, he's... I just know he's reclusive. Yeah, and like, hasn't written a bunch of books, but literary ner nerds go gaga over really? this shit. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's like, gotta be well into his 80s now. But yeah, the shit he's written over the years is very well regarded. Hmm. Like, We get... Uh, him voicing himself and Tom, Tom Clancy, Clancy voicing himself. Ooh, I was like, what the hell ever happened to Tom Clancy? But he's been passed he's away. Gone, yeah. Yep. He died kind of been fairly young, like mid sixties. Like he, a while back, this was, I don't know. I'm going to say 10 to 15 years ago. He sold his, like his namesake to Ubisoft, which is why there's so many Tom Clancy oh, video yeah, games. Yeah. Like they were the ones making the Tom Clancy video games. Rainbow Six. Yep, Rainbow Splinter Six. Cell. Splinter Cell. Look uh, at me. No, no. Hawks. Yeah, yeah. You, look at you knowing your shit. <laughs> uh, Ghost Recon. Uh, and now he just, like he's gone and they he still. sold him the name before he did. So there's still Tom yeah. Clancy video. Uh. And there's games where it's like, this clearly was not a Tom Clancy game. You guys just will slap that name yeah. on anything. Be fucking Tom Clancy's Tetris yeah. any fucking day now. Tom, Tom Clancy's Dig Dug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, I'd play that. Tom Clancy at one point was so successful, he almost bought an NFL franchise. He almost bought really? the Vikings. He was this crazy. But he was going through a divorce and they just didn't know what is, you know, because the NFL makes you show uh -huh. six ways till Tuesday how much money you got. So you have the financial wherewithal to run a team. He just, if it wasn't for that divorce, Tom Clancy would have owned the Minnesota Vikings. That's bonkers. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Do you think yeah. he's like number one among dad authors, Tom Clancy, or is it John Grisham? Oh, I would probably. Or is it Clive Cussler? Cl God. I would say in his at his when they were all working, I say it's Clancy. I bet it's Clancy. Clancy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it is really two different audiences. Do you mm -hmm. like Jets or do you like Court? So who's or is Clancy Jets too? I think of Clancy too with a lot of boats because Hunt for Red October. Yeah, a stuff. lot of military vehicles, is it period. Clive Clusler or Clusler, whatever you pronounce Cussler, it. Clusler, yeah. He's a lot of nautical, right? 
a lot yeah, of I naval. believe so, yeah. and and a lot of just kind of kind of swashbuckling, adventury Indiana Jones types. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, like he wrote Sahara, which is the Matthew McConaughey mm, movie. Okay, yeah, he's he writes a lot of that kind of shit. One of those authors, I've seen those books. At rummage sales. I have a buddy who's a huge really? Cl- Clive Cussler guy. And another, he's a year younger than I am. Another, so it's not an old man. Interesting. Yeah. What if he's still at it? No idea. Yeah. He's what does he one? look like? No. <laughs> like, is it, like, is he a person or is it just a ghost author at this point? Like, <laughs> There's so many of those authors. Even authors I like who I have no... Like, I could... I've read most Michael Crichton books, most of them more than once. Really? And I could walk by Michael Crichton in the street yeah, and have point. no idea. Another one for me is Dean Koontz. I've never read one of his. Dean Koontz has sold a bazillion books. I've never met anyone that's a huge... D- Dean Koontz, I was just like... Like always like, why is he popular? I didn't get it. No like, idea. It doesn't seem like any of his creations have captured the imagination of America. He's never had like some, he's had shit that got made into movies, but none of them like, he did like Phantoms with Ben Affleck okay. is, is based off of a. Uh, yeah. I don't know anything yeah, about, I don't like, know what his books are like, like. I have no idea. You know, Stephen King has had a million. Sure. And, like. Pro, or you know projects that have become yeah. part of the american fabric he know, is like, also just part of pop culture you can yeah. pick him out of a crowd you know what stephen king looks like yeah. and in 1980 dean koontz was right there with steve king that's crazy sales. isn't that wild dean koontz is just as of, prolific he was just like king in that way yeah too. dean like, koontz is one of those where it's like if a truck stop is selling books there's gonna be a dean koontz yep. book in there he's that level yeah yeah, yeah. he's like ubiquitous Dean Koontz, speaking of authors showing up in animation, Dean Koontz shows up in an episode of the Adult Swim cartoon Squid Billies. Okay, so I like Squid Billies. It's like, it's like, I hope he gave permission. It's like, okay, Dean Koontz, you're kind of cool. Like, why would you agree to this? You know, like, so good for you, dude. Like, and it is very funny his appearance in it. Squid Billies is one of those fucking shows where it's like, I either think it's garbage or great, depending yeah, on I, the episode. I lean more great, but I one, do too. It's one of those ones if someone says they don't get. It, I'm like totally get it. The animation horseshit. Yep. It's just it's insane. Some and of usually the for me, the the main qualifier is of how good is it is how much of Granny is in it because oh, I can't fucking God. stand Granny. God, yeah. Like I don't oh, want really? her anywhere near the screen. Oh, there's some Granny shit that I just love. No, I'm just there for what's his name, the main yeah. character, Ernie, and the and the deputy. Early, yeah, early, early yeah. Tyler and Ru- is it Rusty? Rusty's the Rusty, son. Yeah. yeah. There's an insane later season uh, like storyline where he where Rusty gets a girl pregnant and they're going to try to raise the kid together. Okay. And it gets kind of like serious at parts. <laughs> it's the most insane shit. It like, is for sure an adult swim show. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's got the reek of adult swim all yeah. over it. Uh, I do enjoy it. Uh, so the town all reads the book and now they're all gossiping because it's not like well it's not hidden yeah. that she's talking about homer and ned and homer being shit and ned being swarthy and handsome yeah. uh there's a fucking insane scene of mo like every it's a quick shot of everyone on the phone gossiping with each other and they show mo in a fucking pink women's robe with a pink eye mask on sitting at the edge of his bed being like and then i can't believe you know can you believe she would talk to about yeah. homer like that uh yeah i guess i'll order and he's talking to the fucking pizza yeah, guy yeah. so good <laughs> <laughs> and he orders a pizza that is just like oh, i'm so alone yeah. like see i thought that was bad right you don't need to say that we know he's lonely you know, he's chatting up the pizza guy. That is true. Yeah, yes, you like, didn't need that yeah, line, yeah. but that entire, so from good. how he's dressed yeah. to the reveal that he's yeah. talking to the pizza guy. Like that he scene, shouldn't be with one of his gal pals and yeah, they're just gossiping. That but nope. scene is so good. Talking to the Domino's guy. Like the camera should have panned and he's talking to Patty or Selma. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but nope, just talking to the pizza guy. Yeah. Uh Homer finally breaks down and listens to the book on tape read by Mary Kate and Ashley yeah. Olsen, Good who voiced themselves. Yep, yep, yeah. And they'd have been like 2003. They were done, right? Yeah. They'd have, that was long after Full House and after all their little detective yeah, movies. I don't know if they would have. Didn't they do one movie when they were like just. 
Oh, like maybe. 18, I have no 20. Idea. They're supposed it, to be more young adult okay. than little kid shit. I feel like at this point, they were mainly known for doing drugs or and being, being too thin, right? Married to 57-year-old billionaires. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Those two just going to count money the rest of their lives, yeah. I think. <laughs> they're, once they got past killing Heath Ledger, they were like, oh, we're you done. Know what else we, we don't need stuff to yeah. do anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Homer listens to the book on tape and is pissed, of course. Uh, goes after Ned, and then we cut to... We've been cutting to the book, like like an animated version of the mm-hmm. book the whole time. And in the book, Homer, the, the character who is Homer, uh, like chases Ned out to a cliff and stabs him with a harpoon. Yeah. And then he falls and pins himself to a, a whale who then drags Homer's character off the cliff and everybody <laughs> dies. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what uh we're setting up here uh that's what you're expecting to happen because they are also out at the edge of a cliff because springfield has whatever you needed mm-hmm. to have uh but homer it turns out just wants good advice on how to be yeah. a good husband yeah uh that scene of like of ned on his knees praying about like oh if, if this is quick just make sure that homer's blows are accurate and yeah. painless please <laughs> uh and then, yeah, when he opens his eyes, Homer's on his knees in front of him, like, just tell me how to be good. Yeah. <laughs> which, which was kind was, of adorable. That was a good gag, too, and Marge runs up expecting the worst. And yeah. Them, you know, Ned just giving him advice. like Ned's like, you know, a back rub doesn't always have to lead to something yeah. more. And Homer going, why would I give her a back rub unless it's going to lead to... Oh, because <laughs> it makes her feel yeah, good. It's a foreign as, concept. As if that's the first time that's yeah. ever crossed his mind. Yeah. Uh, and then they, you know, they fucking kiss and make up, and then they go off to work on a new book about the JFK assassination. Yeah, that I, was another gag I got to kick was funny. It's all this boxes of yeah. research. So. They're just doing real research yeah. on a JFK book yeah. together. That episode wasn't great but again there's little gags like that kept me there yeah, you know i liked it i didn't love it yeah. you know i could have done without all the like every time we flashed to yep. the book it yep. kind of took me out of it but there was plenty in there that i really liked so i like the author cameos yeah and almost just for that line of like if i write a book will they tell me when it comes out not alone that's like, so fucking that's funny fucking so weird and good. Yeah. <laughs> like and she's like concerned in her yeah. voice too like that's what's holding her back that's what's holding her back from writing a novel yeah. is that she doesn't know whether or not they'll let her know when her book comes mm. out yeah that was god damn that it, was that worth was the funny. price of admission yep that was solid and that mo bit i think is extremely funny yeah. way up to episode 11 the magical mystery tour uh so what's the kid they go to the local library marge takes its bart lisa maggie and millhouse, millhouse yeah like the kids have like a project they're supposed to be working on a but report they need to research it turns out the local library is now completely useless for for children's books apparently is that what happened to libraries oh, i haven't been yeah. to a library in a long time i've never been to the kids i see, i thought maybe kids were still what kept the library mm. afloat uh, there's a library not a block from me. I oh. should go to it sometime. I, I used to get in the habit of going to the public library. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been. I was, I don't know that I've ever been to a public library. There was like our school library yeah. all through elementary and high school and a college. campus library yeah. at college. And that's it. Oh my. I went to the Botanical County Library a lot as a kid. Huh. I should go check this one out. Yeah. I, you, I think that in a different life or maybe this one, because why the fuck not? I should be a librarian yeah, it could be. because you know what I fucking love, Nathan. You know what really fucking chubs me up real oh, good. This is I don't like what this is going. Alphabetizing. Oh, there things. you go. Oof, that's who. Yeah, I, I had a couple of buddies that worked at the campus library for years. Yeah, a lot of putting books on a cart and finding where they belong. Oh, that sounds fucking yeah, perfect you be doing that for a living man oh my god getting paid that could be you that's a government job you think it pays well no not a bit oh oh i mean i think if you become like a, a, in charge of the library then it ain't bad but if you're Head one of the librarian flunkies, yep could i, mean, I get like those kind of owl lenses yep. those owl i think you get that glasses. when you graduate with your librarian technician comes degree. with a beaded string so i can hang them around my neck and like a collection start of shushing people comfortable sweaters 
or do you think or is the 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 stereotype that they play up here is a library just filled with homeless people yeah, at this point yeah i think in america has america fallen far enough that what neighborhood that's what in. libraries yeah. are or just weirdos using their internet yeah i just need some god pornography knows, god knows what yeah. mm-hmm. i mean sometimes you gotta have it <laughs> So uh, they realize that the library's a bust. So Marge sits the kids down, and this is one of those, hey, here's a vehicle for us to tell three different literary base stories. And this is the one. Fuck me, I don't like these this episodes. This is the one. Yeah, I you're didn't right. I forgot like the, I would, tr- the trauma of this episode made me forget it. So my favorite joke of this whole thing is barely a joke that that we've already driven straight past, which is like. The books they do have in the children's section. Oh, one yeah. of them is the Yu Gi Oh! Pricing Guide. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That's funny. The threadbare selection of kids' books they did have were good. Yeah. yeah. So the first of these stories is Henry VIII, who is Homer. He wants to have a son, just, you know, because that's the history of the story. Of like, I, British monarchy shit has never appealed to me in any way. Same here. Just, I And I love history. Yep. I am a history nerd, but there are huge swaths that just, I have zero interest yep, in. This shit, like anything Victorian era too, not that this is Victorian era, but like that kind of shit too, like rich, fancy British people. Mm-hmm. Oh, who, which of the gentlemen callers will visit me or, <laughs> or to visit my more beautiful sisters? <laughs> like Jane Austen, fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. Yeah, this falls this falls right in an in an era that i could not give a shit about so henry the eighth is married to marge and marge bears lisa so yeah. he's bummed about that that so. he didn't have a son yeah. much like all of these it's just fun to see who they cast as mm-hmm. who we get a dr nick appearance which i appreciate yeah into the, that i do like <laughs> his medical diagnosis is that marge's womb is full of serpents <laughs> uh, that was good and then marge gets a divorce which is a better fate than the other wives got yeah so. So now we just get, it's a sea of him marrying women for the hopes of getting a son. And then executing Exec- them. And then I did like where he's going to marry uh, Principal Skinner's mom. Edna, yeah. Yeah. I was like, or take not a Edna, ride on, Agnes. Take a ride on the king. I wrote that down yeah. too. <laughs> She's yeah. like kind of slumped back in her yeah. throat. Just like, why don't you come over here and take a ride on the king maker? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was very funny. So yeah, none of them. So that's basically it. Yeah. He just kills because they can't give him a baby boy. Yeah. And then, like, they show him in old age on his deathbed, and Marge smothers him with a pillow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. And mercifully, we're on to number two. Just <laughs> We have the, uh, it's a Lewis and Clark story. Le- Le- Letty and Carl are Lewis and Clark. Which I thought was fun. Yeah. That's a good, that's good casting. Lisa Sacagawea um, exploring the wilderness. There's a good gag about how like they have no clue what they're doing. It's like it yeah. just shows up still on the East Coast, just <laughs> walking through <laughs> someone's yard. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh-huh. the story of Lewis and Clark. They were bumbling idiot mm-hmm. white people who only survived thanks to the natives and i did like french fur trapper millhouse yeah i thought uh, you might yeah that was a good good get yeah good right in uh, i i the, maybe the only real laugh i got out of this was how uh S- sakajiwi was honored by getting put on a forgettable dollar coin yeah which, are we at that time where we got to start America's going to start trying to push dollar coins down our throats and we're going to say no thank you. Now we want, because I think the presidential dollar coins are like less than a decade ago. We've probably got another decade to go. It's about every 20 years. I didn't even know those happened. Yeah, so That's how forgettable they were. Yeah. yeah. The last I remember is the Skakawea dollar. They put, like, remember Coke machines would have a yellow sticker? Like, we now take... We take... Sec- yeah. yeah. And then but- well, I'm glad you do, Pop yep. Machine, but none of us have those. Yep. Why would we? The early 80s, they pushed the Susan B. Anthony yep. dollar coins. I have some of those. Yeah. What may, What do you think it is that makes Americans hate dollar coins? I don't know. The rest of the world is the giving up on... The rest of the world, like, when I was in Hong Kong, Hong Kong loves coins. Mm-hmm. Like, I probably still around here have, like, a 10 and $20 coins. They're cheaper because they last longer, so they make yeah. more sense, but... We do not no. want them. No, they're too heavy. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Strip clubs, you think, baby? 
Well, they get it on in Canada. You I was going to say, you do it in Canada. Out. Yeah, make just, it hail. Just, yeah, just collect them collect them coins. We had a guy once when I was working at the strip club walk to the stage and threw a fucking handful of change up in the air dramatically, <laughs> and he was immediately escorted out <laughs> of the building. Make it hail is a good term. Yep, uh, that's making it hail, baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, just like, man, what's the fucking matter with you? Get out of here. <laughs> And the third one, it's Bart and Lisa. It's Bart is Mozart and Lisa Salieri. So it's kind of a case of where Lisa really wants to be good at piano. Kind of, it's it's the movie Amadeus, if you've which ever I've seen. never seen, but I know the gist of I it. I remember thinking I would not like it. It's one of those. Oh, I know it won awards, but so what? Mm. But it's it really good. It's a the extent, story. The extent of my knowledge of Amadeus is that they make a reference to it in Last Action Hero, <laughs> and that is <laughs> the extent of it. <laughs> So Lisa uh, is very angered by the fact that Bart or Mozart is so much more innately talented that he doesn't have to put the work in. It's always going to be ahead. Yeah. So and what was pretty cunning, Lisa poisons, gives sleeping drugs to the emperor yeah. and everyone in the crowd. So they all start falling asleep. The press gets a hold of this and Mozart's career is ruined. He's just lying in the streets in the gutter with a bottle of booze. Which gets him sick. Yep. It almost leads to his... It does lead to his death, but, be, but uh, Mozart's like, hey, this isn't that bad. Since I'm dying young, I'm going to be remembered fondly forever. And Lisa yep. realizes, oh, I messed up. And there's a good kind of swerve, too. She's like, okay, now it's my time to shine. Like, uh-oh, sorry, kid. We got this new new kid in here. And it's a... Uh, it's uh, Nelson as Beethoven. Yeah, like I, got, I thought that was a good visual gig. Him with the Beethoven wig on. I like that he does the laugh, but as Beethoven's music. So he's like, ha 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 ha. Yeah, that's I a, thought that was very funny. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that as a child I knew Beethoven the Saint Bernard long before I knew that oh, Beethoven really? was a musical thing. I always remember our music room. Like I think it's in the fourth grade on. There was always pictures of all the composers on the oh, wall. Oh sure. I'd just be bored out of my mind. I just like, okay, so they still stick in my head. Yeah, like, you can see the photos. Or there, photos. Wendell, was that one, or is that a tennis player? Couldn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Those are your two options? Yeah. There's only foreigners I knew back then. <laughs> There's yeah. only two types of non-Americans. Yeah. Composers <laughs> and tennis players. Yeah. Tchaikovsky was on the wall. Yeah, that's a composer, yeah. yes. Bach. Yeah. Bach. Yeah. Johann Sebastian. Or is it Handel? Or is it Handel or Lendl? <laughs> I think Lendl's a tennis player. Someone right now is ripping their ears <laughs> off. Looks like, it's like, yeah. God damn it, these two. Don't know shit about tennis or music. Are you a classical music guy at all? I never have delved, but I don't know. I, I like a backbeat, man. I want music you can fuck to. <laughs> 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 you're, you're, you're telling me that Mozart doesn't do it? No, I don't think it does. I bet, I bet if you got it, if you have good headphones, you just sit back and let it kind of wash over you. But it's good, I guess, but just doesn't do a whole lot for me. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. And I have not done a deep dive or anything, yeah. but yeah, I'm not, not much of a fan. Uh, much like that episode, I don't nope. care for these. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, you, you're you totally spot on. That is the worst episode in this batch. My yeah. God. And, like, I don't even know where to put it with the other rando anthologies, yeah. like the Bible one or the Tall Tales. I think the Tall Tales one probably still my favorite if you made me pick one. Yeah. But that's just because I like American it's, Tall Tales. The subject matter, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I don't hmm, Nothing. Nothing here for Marlon. <laughs> Uh, unlike episode 12, which I liked quite a bit, which is Millhouse doesn't live here anymore. Uh, Nelson is bullied and kicked off Holy the bus shit. for being poor. My mom <laughs> got too fat to work at Hooters. <laughs> and then when they laugh and he goes again, they wouldn't even let her park cars. <laughs> what kind of Hooters has, has a valet, valet service? Yeah. yeah, That collection of them teasing Nelson was so ridiculous. Yeah. God, I mean, fuck Nelson. He's an asshole. But like, yeah. my God, I was dying. And then they eventually just stop the bus and... And kick him out. <laughs> yeah, and kick him out for being poor. Yeah, and drives away. <laughs> How does it start? How do, he, he doesn't have something signed or something? He doesn't have the $7 That's for the field trip. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, that was funny. 
Uh, I like that we get a lot of spicy Millhouse right up yeah, front. Yeah, he is a sassy boy. Yeah, I'm, he is full I'm of beans. Really loving spicy <laughs> Millhouse. If they went this way with yeah. the character, which they never would, I would be fine with. Like two seasons of spicy Millhouse. <laughs> yep, give it to me. Yeah. Put it in my face. Sober Barney and spicy Millhouse. Yeah. <laughs> give me a show where they're roommates. The, yeah, the, the matchup we didn't know we needed. <laughs> Uh, someone important is coming to the plant and Burns doesn't want Homer, Lenny, and Carl to be seen so he sends them to Moe's. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a nickel they can drink beer and look at French postcards. Yep. God damn it. I love what old Burns. What fucking year is he from? <laughs> like from the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. And I love that they're like oblivious. Like they know but they're also oblivious that they should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> Yeah. Cause like they're at Moe's bar cheersing over like, yay, we're an embarrassment. Yeah. And oh shit. I'd probably still in your thunder. But at this point too, is when Apu and his wife burst in attention, American bar devils. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great way to enter a bar. It's our anniversary. Yeah. Cause they're not even like, they're there to have a good time. Yeah, you know? They're celebrating. Calling them as they see them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> American bar devils. <laughs> Uh, Millhouse still spicy at the museum. They're at the museum of is it television history? Yep. And not growing up watching TV, I fucking missed all of these jokes. Oh yeah, and there's some good. None of them reached type them out level at this point. Mm-hmm. But there, there's some good chuckle. I, like <laughs> I liked that there was one section that was all things that talk that shouldn't, yeah. and it was like <laughs> Kit from Knight Rider. <laughs> Mr. Ed is in yeah, there. Mr. Ed is in yeah. there. Like I thought Salem that was from Sabrina the Teenage yeah. Witch. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah, there was some other robot, like <laughs> yeah. maybe the Lost in Space robot. I think it is. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Ed tips over my agent stole all oh, my money. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Millhouse continuing to be spicy at the museum. We don't find out why just yet. Uh, Homer gets thrown out of of Moe's for being too drunk. Mo being like, "Go ahead, get out! As soon as you're out this door, you're the city's problem," <laughs> which was funny. Yeah. And so he's like just laying in the fucking gutter, and people start giving him money as they go by. Yeah. They think he's a hobo. Have you uh, ever been laying in the gutter in daylight drunk? No, I don't believe so. I mean, probably yes, but no. just didn't lay down. <laughs> yeah. I had a couple. One of them, I legit was laying in a gutter at like 4.30 p.m. on a weekday in a residential neighborhood. I still can't believe no one called the cops on me. Holy My shit. friend pulled up. He's like, what the fuck? We were going to a concert. That's We were going to pregame, and that's what pregaming led to. No, I'm wrong. It was more like 6.30 when they finally came to get me. I had like torso in the gutter one arm and leg on the, someone's yard holy so it shit. looked like i'd fallen out of a moving car <laughs> just like and yeah it, did you make it to the concert i mean of parts course of me you did. yeah like of course you did yeah. what, what my, concert was it a good pearl one? jam pearl jam at the fargo dome you so. got that shit house before pearl i was jam? very angry that i got that drunk i was yeah, too drunk yep. i was about to say do you even in remember or were you able to yeah, enjoy first yourself? five five songs were kind of and then too, like they're trying to get me there because they know like it's my idea to go to this, and like like fucking like a, like a mischievous little puppy, like they're leading me there, and then all of a sudden I just veer off and I climb into the box of this pickup because a bunch of dudes are partying and they got tragically hit blaring because they're from Canada. I'm like, yeah. fuck yeah, brother, give me a Molson. And fucking, <laughs> like, the show is starting. It's like well, these guys are cool. <laughs> and then as I'm walking, I have to piss, and we're in a hurry. I just walk backwards and piss. Right in the middle of the Fargo Dome parking <laughs> lot. Shit. Unbutton my pants and just piss walking back. Walking backwards. back. I mean, that's, that's clever. Yeah. I cannot believe I didn't fall over and piss all over myself looking back. <laughs> Much better balance in those days. Oh, boy. Yep. I would have. And we were with my buddy and his wife and her friend who i'd never met i kept referring to her as a narc and kept like kind of like quietly but not quietly say when are we gonna ditch the narc oh, what holy i had shit. reached losing my mind levels of drunk <laughs> that was fucking devil drunk <laughs> like, the, satan was behind the wheel oh shit <laughs> yeah home holy wow that was all that was drinking from 4 30 to like 6 
and like everyone else's rides that's came. Quick. That's, yeah, that's I ninety took minutes. How'd you manage that? Big old bottle of rum to the dome. Ugh. Like went for it because they were like, "Hey man, I can't have you in here. So drink what you got to drink, and then just hang out in front of my place before they come. I'm gonna lock the door behind me, Holy and I just shit. fucking chug a lug, chug a lug, <laughs> a bunch of rum. <laughs> like, oh, this couldn't end tragically. <laughs> this will be fine. Everything's oh, fine. Yeah. It's a different time. Oof. Different time. <laughs> well, I'm glad Pearl Jam was good. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. Hey. Eddie Vedder sounds hammered anyway. Yep, so. exactly. That was definitely hammered Eddie, Ver- Eddie Vedder time. That was uh, right at tour. Yeah. Uh-huh. They played Sleight of Hand, which they rarely ever play live. I was okay. very happy. Wish I would have been more sober for it. They really pride themselves on putting together varied set lists. Yeah, that's a big thing. Like That's why like they're a band that people follow and go to every show on mm-hmm. the tour. You know, I know like, that like them like they record at every show don't they They used to yep. yeah i don't know if they still do but used to like yeah my buddy bought the fargo set like he i remember he burnt me a cd of it which i still have in my <laughs> car yeah <laughs> oh god and there was a band that also does that i guess not quite to the same level as a band like pearl jam or like bruce springsteen 311 they're 311 is one of those bands that is way more popular than you and i realize or like, or like I think it's more so way more has diehard fans than yeah, you would realize. Yeah. You it's know? not like, that they're popular. It's that the people who do love really them. Really like them. Yeah. yeah. Like, I never would have guessed. I would have thought they're a band that writes, okay, here's our set list for this tour. Right. But don't they, I don't know what percentage, but a, a percentage of every one of their shows is different. Yeah. Deep cuts. 311 does their own cruise. Yeah. Like, they're yeah. popular. Weird, I don't, yeah. Which, I don't get it. I see. I, 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 not that level, but I, I, I could put together a three eleven greatest hits that I'd really enjoy. Really? Yep. Was I could. It? I could. No, I couldn't. Really? I was about to say I could do oh, an yep. EP, but no, I don't think I could. No. Yeah. See, I like a lot of their singles. No. I don't. Right. I don't need the D. De- I think a lot of people like their early pre-fame two albums, like Grassroots and something else. Okay. Which that shit don't do nothing for me. It's. it's- Pretty Way much. too white boy funky for me. Okay, you know, like. yeah, <laughs> white boy funky. That's your wrestling persona. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a lot of that sliver of music, the three elevens and the sublimes. But yeah. man, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I just can't. I don't care. Dislike sublime like a lot of people do. I think just a lot of the songs got so wildly overplayed. So like, I never need to hear Santeria again. Right, but I could handle Bad Fish. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't change the station if Bad Fish mm-hmm. was on. But. Yeah. Or like fucking. If I haven't heard it ten thousand times, I'd probably still enjoy what I got. But I have heard it ten thousand mm-hmm. times. I'm yeah. good for this lifetime. Not a fan. Uh, turns out Millhouse is spicy because he and his mom are moving. Mm-hmm. Luann and Millhouse are moving to Capital City. Uh, Homer comes home drunk with flowers that he bought at a gas station. <laughs> uh, and so Bart is all sad that Milhouse is gone. He's kind of moping around the house. There's a great scene where there's a knock on the door and, and he goes, oh, my friend is here. And Lisa goes, is it Ralph making fun of him? And he goes, no, it's not Ralph. Yeah. And he opens the door and it's Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> so good. He's bad. Yeah. <laughs> And Ralph is a bad playmate because he's dumb as shit. Holy shit! When there, when Bart's sitting at the table and Ralph's got his hands over in, over his eyes and he counts to twenty and goes, "Ready or not, here I come!" And Bart goes, "We're playing checkers." <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, that's good. God damn it, uh, Another Ralphie. fun thing early, I like. I think just before this is when the. Uh, when Milhouse and his mom are getting ready to leave, the uh, the packing company is called Starving Teachers Movers. Yeah. If you look, it's the music teacher and the gym teacher. Oh, no shit kidding. Yep. I, I didn't pay that close attention. The goddamn music teacher in like a full body coverall <laughs> lugging shit was so good. <laughs> oh, I missed that. That's funny. Uh Homer decides this panhandling thing is going to be worth it, so he's panhandling for an for uh, enough money to get Marge an anniversary gift. Yeah, uh, Bart goes to Capital City to to visit Millhouse, <laughs> who. Oh, it, oh, it's so good. Milhouse has completely reinvented himself yeah. with bleach blonde, yeah. spiky hair and eyebrows. Yeah. Also did the eyebrows. <laughs> He's got a big fucking M gold chain yeah. and a fucking track suit. Yeah. I think, and, and him and his new buddies are teasing Bart about something. Yeah. And he leans in. I'm, I will always love you. <laughs> he leans back and keeps teasing him. And keeps him. teasing Bart. Yeah. They're all dunking on Bart. <laughs> 
Holy shit. I love hip, cool, new mill house. Oh, so good. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> There's a good thing coming up, too, where uh, it's Lisa and Bart and uh, Millhouse comes up. And fucking Bart's line is like, oh, yeah, Millhouse, funny little guy, scared of the dark and the light. <laughs> 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 That's such a good way to describe Millhouse. It's so true. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so Bart's kind of laying around all bummed out. Uh, Marge suggests that he helps Lisa wash the car, and these two become friends. Yeah. They're, they're pals. Uh, in the meantime, Homer has bought uh, diamond earrings for Marge uh, with his panhandling money. <laughs> I like that there's a long sequence of him giving her the earrings and her guessing what they're made out of yeah, because yeah. she would never guess yeah. diamond. <laughs> uh, Bart and Lisa jump the gorge on their bikes and find an Indian burial mound <laughs> full of cave, uh, cave drawings and all that. Uh, Homer is still panhandling, and the rest of the area hobos are kind of bummed kinda about salty. it. salty. Yeah, because this Johnny-come-lately is blown up their their hobo <laughs> spot. Uh, I like the moment when Bart and Lisa realize that they've become friends. Yeah, <laughs> they're both they're like, kind of there's a stark, like, yeah, oh, no. Like, oh, boy. Uh, the the main hobo drags Marge down to where Homer is and shows her that uh, that Homer's been panhandling. Because he, of course, had hidden that from Marge. Yeah. And she's appalled, but then is like, you probably need to buy me a brooch. to yeah. Like, <laughs> she's fine with it as long as she's the beneficiary. There's a good scene to where Homer references, like, like the extravagance that panhandling has brought to them. Like, like <laughs> this Bob Seger box set. Yeah. Fucking box sets. You think they still make them? That was a I lucrative bet- industry in the music market at one time. Like... The always wildly overpriced, lavishly, you know, mm. fucking, you get a book inside. And a keychain. Yeah. yeah. I owned the Kiss box set. Did you, I was just going to ask. Kiss box set. For okay. Sure. I owned the, uh, the big Led Zeppelin one that was really popular in the 90s. It was like four discs, but had like, it was like, I don't know, a one foot by one foot box. It was like a wide front okay. for display. It was always like, I think it's a crop circle on the front. I thought, oh, I got a four disc Johnny Cash one. Okay, I was that really. That's what kind of sprung me into Johnny Cash as a kid. You know, like just all the basically like everything from like 1980 and prior. You know, like I think that Kiss box set. I think when that uh, you can get it separately now, but I think when that came out, that was the only way you could get Kiss Alive Four. Oh, was in the box right. set. That, of course, they which would was Kiss away. Symphony. That yep. was the because mm-hmm. Metallica did the symphony thing, so yep. Kiss did it too. And then I once this isn't quite the same thing. I ordered an eight disc Motown's greatest hits or just like Soul Music's greatest hits off of the TV for like a hundred dollars, which I did not have. <laughs> but the goal was I brought them all to a friend's house, carefully removed them, burnt copies of each of them, sealed it back up, and returned it. I was so nice. proud of myself. Look the, at you, the perfect crime. Take that, yeah, company. Take, take that, Time Warner. <laughs> <laughs> I've never ordered one of those but god those were ubiquitous the music collection oh, ads on tv with the the scrolling names of the songs i ordered like the best of hair metal when i was blackout drunk with my buddy's credit card i didn't have a credit card went into his bedroom and took his cr- credit card out of his pants like <laughs> hey bro i fucked up i owe you like a hundred dollars <laughs> sorry bro i yeah. needed monsters of rock <laughs> yeah, that's what it was of no, course it, it wasn't was. that it was uh i but i had i owned that around the same of time course you yeah did, yeah <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, Millhouse is back because Kirk got pity custody. <laughs> so great. And that scene when, like, the fucking repo man is there for his pants. Oh, God, when they repo his pants. He's so like, good. don't make me do this in front of my son. Yeah. So they go outside right in front of the window and do it. <laughs> and that's when Millhouse explains what happened with his new friends. Like, yeah, a burglar broke in during a sleep or peed on the folding, the fold out bed. Peed on my bed and then folded, folded it, back. it back into the Count <laughs> and then escaped. Oh, holy and it shit! Kind of gets sad when Lisa realizes that Bart's. Yeah, now that Millhouse is back, Bart kind of leaves Lisa out in the cold. Lisa is uh, 
old news now. Now that Poor Millhouse sad is Lisa. back. Yeah. I don't like sad Lisa. Mm-mm, me either. Uh, luckily, we very quickly turned to angry Lisa. Mm-hmm. Lisa is fucking scorned. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what this note means. Well, I, if, if you want to hand me the wheel. Yeah. Nathan, See, take the there, wheel. I, there's some missing. Just vapor locked there, over here. <laughs> there's some nine inch nails cut scenes from the closer video in my brain too, where you don't get to see what's going on. But eventually we get Lisa still very salty in the house. And Bart is setting up a Monopoly game. Oh, yes. That's, the Monopoly game that Millhouse brought her. Yeah. The Capital City Monopoly. Capital City Monopoly. Yep. And she's and he's like, well, you know, play some like whatever. I'm not into this. Well, grab a chance card. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I will do something. Do your chores for the whole week. Yeah. And then it's the next one's one free hug. Because like, yeah. what a wholesome fucking ending. Like, and she gives Bart a big hug. Yeah. This and, was a great episode yep i was i was very into this one and then it ends with like that weird fourth wall break with that lady from the jeffersons Mm -hmm. who i don't i've never seen the jeffersons so i don't so all these tv jokes go right past me man you know i only had cable for a pretty short amount of my childhood it's weird how much of it I absorbed. <laughs> like, I was a basic cable sponge <laughs> from like ages of five to eight. <laughs> we just weren't TV watchers. Yeah. And even once we did get satellite TV, I really just watched wrestling and VH1, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the music channels and wrestling. It's funny as a little kid too. Like my dad would have dumb, but just a little bit, you know, on a rainy Saturday day where you aren't outside, just have something on in the background, I guess. I mean, I watch a lot of cartoons and shit, but that's different. But like, I still picked up enough. Like, why the fuck do I know the plot line of my three sons? <laughs> should, the show went off the air in 1963. I shouldn't know, but it was on Nick at night. And it, I'm sure I walked by it a million times and it was on, you know? Like, yeah. I like, I've not only, and it's like a huge swath of history. Not only have I never seen an episode of all in the family, I've never seen an episode of different strokes or friends. Like know, there's like, it's, it spans 20 fucking years. Something just came to me. This this is why I know so much about it. For some b- baffling reason, we subscribed to TV Guide my entire childhood. So I would just read articles about classic shows okay, too. Okay, sure. So that now that's, that's why. that That's way more than me absorbing it through osmosis as a kid. It's because I'd read about them in TV Guide. Like... Yeah, they, they do like a lot of historical like TV shit. Like, hey, here's the ten most influential sitcoms of the seventies. Yeah, so you like didn't that. have to have seen them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that it makes is. sense. Yeah, weird. Yeah, I just we weren't TV people. So that was what episode number was that again? That was twelve. Well, that twelve was very very good. Maybe my favorite of the bunch. Mm. I really liked that first one. Yeah. This probably the God, robot yeah. one. I think I did enjoy this one more. I was. I think so too. One. I think if you made me pick between the two, that's mm-hmm. the one. And I will say, episode thirteen, smart and smarter, at least starts off with a bang. The whole Homer getting that novelty toilet seat. And <laughs> assuming Bart would sit, <laughs> and he's so excited. And Bart goes in, comes out. Like, why didn't you sit? I'm a dude. <laughs> it's just not like because I'm a dude. Yeah. And, and Homer's like, well, you're gonna sit on that? <laughs> to- forcing him forcing onto the toilet. A child to sit on a toilet. Oh, wait, my pants are up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> And this Bart does almost like a judo move. Yeah, this is shifts some weight so Homer lands on the toilet and, and gets dr- squirted with the fucking himself. prank toilet yeah. seat. And then they destroy that yeah. bathroom. At some point, the shower head gets taken off and shoved in Homer's mouth. Yeah, and then like, and, and then it becomes like, oh shit, mom's coming. Well, like they both. This is even better. It's it's Marge like, what are you boys doing? There? And Homer, oh no, it's old lady it's Simpson. It's old lady Simpson. <laughs> yeah, such a great way to refer to your wife. <laughs> and I that, like that. Among all the destruction, they've also just left the shower head, which is just flailing about like a, an unattended fire hose. Yeah. Oh. God damn it, that was funny. <laughs> and Homer, there's it shows up in this episode a couple of times that when things are looking bad, he messed up. It's hey, let's go have. Chicken I'm taking wings. you to pancakes. Yeah, pancakes yeah. Is it. and the whole family goes <laughs> yay. <laughs> it's whatever the it's complete catastrophe is happening in that house is now forgotten because it's yeah. pancake time. So the Simpsons are now standing in line to get their pancakes. 
And the pancake shop is next, right next door. Is there a gag too, where they point out that the pancake place is an old pizza place? It used to be a pizza place. They just painted the pizzas brown. Yeah, because it was like the Leaning Tower of Pizza, yeah. and they clearly just repainted them as pancakes. <laughs> pancakes, king of breakfast foods. Yeah, I, I fuck with them. I like. I like uh, a waffle almost as much. Really? Uh, to me, that disparity is pretty wide. Is it really? Like, a waffle's fine. I ain't going to say no or to a waffle. crepes? I can eat crepes all day, crepes too. Crepes are good, too, yeah. but they're not a pancake. Really? Okay. Give me a pancake. Well, they're you know, good, man. They the are. only thing that can can maybe, like, topple pancakes from the breakfast carb throne is biscuits and gravy. Dude, not, I might like French toast more than pancakes. Really? I love French toast. Baffling. I think it was all, might be one of those things, too, that if I had it more, but as a kid, French toast was a rare treat. Okay. As were hot breakfast foods in general. Right. But, like, especially French toast. I don't know what it was about. God damn, I still like it. I like it. I'm not going to push it on the floor, yeah. but, like... <laughs> Icky. <laughs> Ew. No, Marlon. <laughs> Bring him more. He has to eat it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh god. When you get waffles, are you a like whipped cream and fruit and all that kind of person? I would say the same as you. I, I wouldn't push it off the floor, but I that wouldn't be my choice. Yeah. If I'm if I have a waffle, it's That's crepe territory for me. Okay. Even then, I'm not super into that. Okay, yeah. There's something about like the Oh, powdered sugar and whipped cream and and that's French strawberries. Toast, yeah, pancakes. I'm gonna get butter and syrup. It might not always be maple. Maybe I'll get silly and have a fruit flavored syrup. Okay, but I don't need you know a whole pear with my you know, <laughs> like. I want syrupy goodness. For me, pancakes, French toast, crepes, and waffles all get the same thing, which is peanut butter and maple syrup. Peanut butter, huh? Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't do it, but I would happily eat it. Like, oh yeah, fuck uh, it up. Crepes is, a, is for me is a frou frou. Having some whipped cream <laughs> and some sliced strawberries make it decadent. There's something about it. It's like this is dessert for breakfast. Yeah, I don't yeah. want that. Which yeah, that is what pancakes are. It is. It's, <laughs> there, it's is, cake yeah, right in the yeah, title. Yeah. <laughs> So they are in line for their syrupy treats, and they right beside some kind of fancy pre-nursery school. Wicker bottoms. The wicker bottoms, that's what it is. Which, how many miles would you have had to have driven to get to the nearest pre-nursery school? Could you do it in a day? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Maybe Bismarck might have had one, but... You'd have otherwise. had to have driven for a day to get to a nursery school, yep. much less a pre-nursery school. I did not know anyone. None of the people in my kindergarten circles went to nursery school no. preschool like like i think the town kids or at least some of them might went have. to preschool oh yeah it might have been a th- yeah i'm sure it existed in bono that was just a level of people we yeah. were not associated with the rest of us lunks just showed up in kindergarten and hope for the best yep you watch sesame street sesame street was preschool when yeah I was a lavar kid. burton was yep. my teacher yeah, or like the idea that some kids went to daycares is so fascinating to me. Yeah, too, you know? same, yeah. But then I think about it. My mom for a while babysat four, five, six kids. That's technically just probably weren't declaring it on her taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, my mom would scold us if we ever said daycare. Like, we can't let the IRS know. And it wasn't cash. It was just like yeah. some pulled pork shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, we baked you some pies <laughs> for watching our fucking rugrats. Yeah. <laughs> So they're in line, they, and oh, uh, Apu and his wife and their army of children are in line, <laughs> and they get talking, it's like, oh, you know, like, we're, you know, this is very prestigious, it's hard to get your kids in, they have to be gifted, and uh, Marge is, the, the thinks, thinks that's crazy, as a great line, it's like, uh, Marge is like something about, like, all Maggie should have to worry about is the, is the uh, raspberry monster, <laughs> yeah. gives her a raspberry, what do you think was president? Last time you got a raspberry on the tummy. <laughs> Reagan or maybe Bush won. You think maybe Had Bush? Had to be Reagan. You're There's, that little? I was born in 85. You know, what year did Bush get elected? 88. Yeah, maybe Marlon got a... Reagan for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Reagan for Had sure. That bloated grown man belly at 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, doing this to the mailman. I'll have to, <laughs> yeah. I'll have to ask my mom yeah. for sure when this comes <laughs> out, but I would guess Reagan. <laughs> Uh, so yeah i thought that was a good gig uh, and then uh 
Dr. Hibbert said, well, that's a good thing. It's very hard. You know, Maggie's probably not the kind of baby that can get mm-hmm. into such a... Of course, that sets Homer off. Now Homer and, wants her in there. And yeah. so Homer, like, by golly, our kid's going to get in here, even though they certainly cannot afford it. He's like, you can't afford to pay your hospital bill. You can't get your kid in here, you know? <laughs> Uh, so they bring it, bring Maggie in to, to the kind of like to the committee that chooses if your kid's worthwhile into the program or not. Yeah. And that's where we get Simon Cowell. And he's in his typical Simon ways, a real asshole, which 2003, thought, this was the time peak, for this joke. Peak, yep. I know living with my parents during COVID for that summer. I got to see what now is his show. It's America's Got Talent or something. He's not an asshole anymore, which means he's pointless. Oh, is he softened a little? Yeah. He's just another judge he, now? Now, no, I'd say now he's just baseline. Okay. The, the other ones are like, everyone's great. Let's all hug. Where he's just normal. But you need, you need too nice. You need normal. You need peckerhead. That was the formula mm. on, Mer- on American Idol. Paul Abdul, too nice. Randy Jackson, neutral. Cowell, peckerhead. Worked for like 15 seasons. Now everyone's <laughs> nice. We're all winners. Let's all cut the first place trophy into 37 equal sides. Uh, I have never watched a single episode of any the talent show. They're the worst thing ever, and my parents can't stop watching that. <laughs> to this day, if I call home, you watching The Voice right now? I never have once. I've never once. <laughs> Why would Why I be would watching this The be Voice? The time? And no matter what I say, I'm just going to get a rundown of what's happening. Uh, there's this little kid on here. He's real good, but I don't know. I don't know if the judges are going to go for like. I don't, I'm not watching it. I don't, I, 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 what kind of opinion? What should I add to this conversation to make it? It's insane, man. Like I've yeah. never, I've never had the desire. The only time I ever see any of that shit is when it comes across your Facebook feed. Cause your aunt yeah. shared one where everybody cries. Yeah. Or know? like uh, there's a guy that doesn't know what he's doing. Like yeah, this dipshit shits his pants while trying to sing, you know, like she bangs, you know, like <laughs> this no handed little girl won yeah. on the voice and everyone That's, cried about. Oh, those shows too. It, 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 that is not just an exaggeration that comedians make fun of. That is what that show is. Yeah. You know, when, you know, when the, when, uh, when the locusts came and ate my grandparents who raised me from birth, <laughs> well, I just didn't think I had any chance of music, but my godparents, they told me. And then when lightning struck and burnt them to the ground, I did this for them. <laughs> like, and there's some schmaltzy music playing. Oh, it drives me up yeah, the wall. That's the only time I've ever seen any of that shit. Yep. So dumb. Not a fan. So Lee, uh, Maggie can't talk. So like, what are you doing? This is pointless. Yeah. Come back when you can cowl, talk. Cowl does his cowl shit. Yep. And they bring her back. And Marge's like, oh, that's okay. You know, Maggie, Maggie's a perfectly normal baby, whatever. But Lisa's kind of like, I think there's something there. You yeah. And, he, and she kind of realized, oh, Maggie is smart. She's just a non-communicative smart. Mm-hmm. Like spelling, it's like, uh, it's something about like ice. Would be a good With her box, she's oh, you spelling mean rice. Blocks. Well, why don't we get caviar? Price. Yeah. That was a good exchange. Yeah, that was fun. So like, hey, mom and dad, we got to bring Maggie back. She's going to wow them. And she does, you know, yeah. like with all like using her hands and this and that. And they're like, oh man, Maggie actually tests out at like 164 IQ or something mm-hmm. like that. And Lisa now is no longer team. She's like, wait a second, I'm a 159 IQ. There's a great moment where Cowell really talks down to her when she's like, 164, I'm 159. That means I'm not the smartest one in the family anymore. And Cowell leans down to her and is just like, that's right. Because 169 is a bigger <laughs> yeah. number. Isn't you see that how right? that works, yeah. right? Yeah. So good. And I think later on, it's like, well, the world always needs sweater folders or yep. something like that. Like, what a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> so now, of course, Maggie's got all the shine on her. And Lisa does not. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a couple of things that where she kind of tries to win back that shine, but she realizes, oh, I'm not Maggie's queen smart bee now. So yeah. she's like, I got to find something else. I got to find a, my own thing. The first thing she tries is stand up comedy. Yeah. With that, tucking her shirt in with that tie that was so tie, good. tie, the baggy shirt <laughs> is too big for her. And when she goes, no one is happier, more well adjusted than a stand up comedian. Yep. So, and she tries to do tight five in the cafeteria. <laughs> Does it go over so well? Not getting any love. Oh. There's like a recurring thing of Skinner just like slapping her down every yeah. so often that keeps showing up. <laughs> There's a great joke right before this when she's laying in her bed, like clearly upset, and Marge comes in and goes, Lisa, you seem so blue lately. Did the last of something die? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
God damn it, yeah. But yeah, she's off to find her own identity, and it's not stand-up comedy. And the next one was great, too. She's Holy shit. She's all super gothy. And Goth Lisa. When Milhouse goes, what are you now, an Oakland Raiders fan? <laughs> I think her name is Raven Crow Never Smiles. Never Smile, yeah. Just so great. So, yep, she tries to go goth, but that does not work. That's not that's not Lisa's Lisa's bag. She tries a few. Like, it, it kind of becomes a montage. Yeah. After it's like a cheerleader, a this or a that, soccer player, yep. a yep. cowgirl. Yeah, and it's, yeah, she's not cut out for any of them. No, not you can't force it like this. Yeah. So now she is just full of resentment towards Maggie. Mm -hmm. It's really building up now. So she, uh, they got some flashcards that they're using to help Maggie do better in school so lisa starts like purposely teaching maggie incorrect stuff that's sabotaging maggie you know, that's dirty that's that is, dirty pool that is very dirty marge and homer catch her <laughs> homer has got this like little toy cat that you can type in and it'll little say speak words and spell kind that's of thing he like scolds lisa with, yeah like so you I'm, are a disappointment you yeah. know like typing it out so that was yeah that was a good gag and now Lisa just kind of realizes it's like, there's no place for me here. Maggie would be better off without me. We get a glimpse of future Lisa living a shitty life, which is usually we get Homer. Yeah. I mean, Bart. Bart, yeah. Living the shitty, shitty middle life. Bart. We get a, a really rundown Lisa. Uh, it's totally from Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte is the movie. Where, okay. Where I was Maggie's curious in a what wheelchair. it is. Yeah. Because yep. I didn't I didn't catch the reference. I didn't know it. But yeah. I think it's Betty Davis and Joan Crawford play the two sisters in that who were movie stars of a bygone era who absolutely hated each other. Really? Like, hated like in a way that it's hardly they wouldn't it would never fly now because the PR firms would f soothe everything. Huh. But you know Hollywood was a smaller city back then yeah. so two superstars could openly loathe each <laughs> other like like delight in each other's failures. Like huh. what a like what a time to have been alive, you know? Like what would TMZ have been like back then if like if the two biggest movie stars in the world openly talk shit about each other no kidding so wild to think and just, and both kind of clever and just salty as <laughs> f like i just lost my train of thought <laughs> <laughs> uh so, her envisioning herself pushing maggie down yep, there we go so lisa runs away ends up deciding you know she doesn't know where to go because she's eight <laughs> she's ready for life on her own so she decides hey let's go into the big uh, springfield giant ass science museum which yep. somehow a city with a volunteer fire department has <laughs> we've been to that natural <laughs> history mm -hmm. museum before yeah in the dustin hoffman substitute teacher episode yeah. oh that's going back a ways too he shows up here in uh in a very brief flash you, are you see his photo me. you see his photo on Lisa's nightstand. Oh, really? Because Marge, like, in 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 helping to get Lisa back on her feet, she writes her a note that just says, mm -hmm. you are Lisa Simpson, and hands it to her mm -hmm. in a real mm -hmm. be yourself thing. And that's what he did in yep. that episode. Yep. She goes, I already have one of those. And oh, it flashes to the nightstand, yeah. and it's framed with his photo. Yeah. <laughs> So Lisa's, uh, there's a good gag where there's some kind of exhibit and they're checking everyone for like contraband snacks. Yeah. And of course, comic book guy is just riddled. <laughs> with, she's like, like, it's like something like, uh, I, I dare you to try to find them all. It's like, I'm baking cookies as we speak We're or something so gross. gross. <laughs> yeah. But thankfully, Lisa gets to live off of the snack flotsam and jets of flying off of Yeah. Them. And so she just hangs out. After everything closes up, she does the uh, slide down the brontosaurus's yeah, uh, neck the and spine. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of just bored. Just living at the museum, yeah. yeah. That's, that ain't no way to live. <laughs> There's that moment where she finally goes to go to sleep, and she's in that enormous body exhibit yeah. in the mouth because the, the tongue is soft. Yeah. And she lays down and pulls out the photo of her family. She's just like, stupid Maggie, I can't really believe. <laughs> and she, the camera pans back, and she's on the bitter side yeah, the of the salty, tongue. Salty, get over the sweet. Yep, yeah, so she yeah. slides over to the sweet side, and then she's like, oh, I miss them so much. Yeah. That was a good bit. That was very good, yep. Yeah. So, and then I think uh, the next thing we get is the family realizing she's gone. Yeah. So they get the cops involved. There's a 
the always I always gonna chuckle because the cops are ridiculous. Oh my god! Like, yeah, have, making Marge sign that uh, or fill out that like survey, like survey. a customer survey. Yeah. <laughs> And she's kind of, you know, being held hostage by them, so she has to give them all a five out of five. <laughs> he looks over, oh, somewhat satisfied, huh? Maybe I'll somewhat find your daughter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so they end up do finding out that Lisa's at the science museum, and they're kind of running it looking for her. And in typical S- Simpsons fashion, somehow Bart, Marge, and Homer get trapped in the mouth and then uh, Maggie is at the control. Why does this thing have controls? <laughs> like it's like a like a you know like a fair ride. So she hits the swallow button. So they end up in the stomach. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be there because it's filling up with stomach acid or something. So it's uh, the race is on. Like hey Maggie, you gotta hit this button. Then she hits the wrong button again. So just things are looking dire for the Simpsons. That's when Lisa stumbles out of her you know hobo slumber wherever she was lying yeah. in a pile of old newspapers. And then she sees Maggie, and she's able to try to communicate with Maggie what to do. But Maggie, again, nonverbal. But then she's like, she points like the, the her pacifier. It's the color of the pacifier. Yeah. And that's when she hits the right button. Simpsons family fall out of the bowels. Escape through the asshole. Yeah, yeah. Of the giant monster <laughs> digestive beast. <laughs> and then it's pretty, oh no, there's another kind of plot point. Yeah. As they discover, oh, actually, Maggie's not smart. Or it's not abnormally smart. She was just following cues that Lisa didn't even know she was giving. Yeah. Lisa was kind of subconsciously coaching her through it. Yeah. And that's... And Maggie's just a regular baby. Yeah, she's just regular old Maggie. You know, it's just nothing... But then, of course, Lisa has that ego, so she's just kind of thrilled about that. And then there's a moment we end with uh, them in her room, in Lisa's room, and Maggie picks up the saxophone and starts playing it perfectly, yeah. and Lisa's just like, that's not for babies, yeah. and takes yeah, it from her and puts course. her pacifier back yeah. in. <laughs> that was funny. That was a good ending. Yeah. That was a good episode. Yeah. I liked that one. I put it a step below, like, the fourth and first one. But it was yeah, good. It was a step good. below those other two good ones, but mm-hmm. good all around. There's a fucking sight gag in this that is so ridiculous when the Simpsons are out looking for Lisa and the cops show up to let her let them know that they found her stuff at the Natural History Museum, and... It's a fucking motorcycle and sidecar, and Wiggum's driving the cycle, and there's two cops crammed into that sidecar. <laughs> yeah. Lou and the other one, yeah. whose name I'm forgetting. Oh. Just the idea of two <laughs> cops riding in a yeah. sidecar together <laughs> I is forgot about very that. funny good. to me. Yeah. <laughs> good batch. Whatever, I think it's just two weeks in a row. All in all, man, we had a pretty good batch. I'm so far putting season 15 far ahead of season 14. Agreed so far. I yeah. thought last week was a little more of a mixed bag than you did, mm-hmm. but yeah, this is outside of that fucking anthology one in this one. This yeah, is a good batch. Damn right. Yep. We didn't get five aces or anything, but yep. pretty pretty solid this time around. Yeah. We got middle pair with a flush draw. Sure. Yeah. I don't know enough about <laughs> poker. I had to really think about yeah. that. <laughs> It's a solid hand. Let's see how they go next week. Next week, we will do episodes 14 through 18. Ooh, so the second half begins pretty much. Yep, the second half of the crotch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 14 through 18 are the episodes for next week. You got anything going on in life this week? Ah, and just enjoy Labor Day. You know, hardworking man. So going to kick sure, your feet up Labor and Day. really relax <laughs> i mean that it or it will already have all happy you'll find out about my relaxing on the next podcast but t- when this comes out you and i will have comedy coming up that weekend mm. so that'll be fun it's coming we'll up nice, yeah fun comedy road trip mm-hmm. telling looming. jokes the good people of south dakota accepting us into their beautiful state mm-hmm. their beautiful south dakotan bosoms mm-hmm. F- full heaving <laughs> Black Hills bosoms. Oh man, that's a porn. Black Hills, Black bosoms. Hills bosoms. Or it's Jeepers. a it's a local burlesque. Troupe. I bet it smells like cigarettes, no matter what it is. <laughs> Were we to like guess? Gas station coffee. <laughs> those, those two smells usually hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> So we will catch everyone next week. 14 through 18 are the uh, episodes and you can find us on the internet at Barley Basket USA at gmail.com at Barley Basket USA on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Everyone enjoy your week. Bye everybody.